Sharp lad in the fountain. Funny papers. Marino hunch. All this coming up this week on Horses and Courses. This is the OTB Television Network. One night, boys. Betting Television Network presents Horses and Courses. OTB Thoroughbred News with your host, Jack Wolfeseeder. And now with a look at this week's news in the thoroughbred industry, here's Jack. And hello everyone, welcome to this week's edition of Horses and Courses. Well, more three-year-old calisthenics over the past weekend. Checking on the action down in South Florida at Gulfstream and in New Orleans at the fairgrounds. We've got uh, three-year-old Colts and Phillies uh, pointing toward the big races coming up as the spring season approaches us. And we've also got a look at uh, some of our Phillies and mares in action, a couple of nice uh, sprint races for you. And what else is new? More bad weather in northern, and now this time, Southern California to boot. So stay with us, a nice entertaining hour of great racing action from across the USA. Let's start in with uh, Saturday's running of the Fountain of Youth, nationally televised on the ESPN. For our three-year-olds, the final stepping stone in the Florida Derby series. And just a four-horse field, but a very competitive, on paper anyway, four-horse field. A uh, mile and a sixteenth the distance, $200,000 was the guaranteed purse on the race. We had Cape Town, the Holy Bull winner in here. We had the very, very peculiar Coronado's quest and his pre-race antics from the Hutchinson in which he finished second. We had Lil's Lad, that big allowance winner on Hutchinson Day. And we had Hallory Hunter, one of Nick Zito's promising three-year-olds who finished up in that allowance race behind Lil's Lad. Let's take a look at the four of them go, and uh, we'll discuss the race. Here's Tom's call of Saturday's Fountain of Youth. They're in the gate, and they're off. And Coronado's Quest breaks in front today. Lil's Lad is moving with him, and those two have hooked up just out the starting gate. Then a break of four. Back to Kinktown, and a long way back to Hillary Hunter, who is unhurried in the early going. Lil's Lad goes on with it. Lil's Lad taking over from Coronado's Quest, and he zips through an opening quarter in 23 seconds flat. It's Lil's Lad in front as they begin the run down the backstretch. Tracked by Coronado's Quest, second by two, and Cape Town isn't far behind. Well behind is Halo Ray Hunter. He's almost 20 lengths away from Lil's Lad. Lil's Lad and Jerry Bailey doing very little to harness his natural speed. He's run a half in a testing 46 and one fifth seconds. He's pulled away by five with a half mile to go. Coronado's Quest still running in second and Cape Town. Kent DeSormo asking Cape Town for his run. Rounding the far turn, gaining on Lil's Lad. The lead now down to a length and a half with three furlongs to go. Coronado's Quest moving to confront him as they approach the top of the stretch. Cape Town is only three lengths from the lead. Another 10 or 12 to Hillary Hunter. Passing the quarter pole. Lil's Lad holding on to the lead three quarters of a length. Coronado's Quest coming to him. The stage is set at the top of the stretch here at Gulfstream. And Lil's Lad is called on for everything he has. And Lil's Lad is responding, holding on to the lead. Smith all over Coronado's Quest, but they're still second. And Lil's Lad will prevail. Lil's Lad has won the Fountain of Youth by two and a half lengths. Lil's Lad, Jerry Bailey up two and a quarter length score. Four to five, of course, uh, the favorite. 
the last race, that allowance race at a mile and a sixteenth, that was indeed the key. We told you that at the outset when uh, Neil Howard opted to pass the seven furlong Hutchinson. He knew he would get much more out of that allowance race uh, with a foundation to come in here to the Fountain of Youth. He's just a very fast horse. Jerry Bailey does not tinker with this guy. He lets him do what he wants to do. Break out of the gate and run. How far can he go? Well, it looks like a mile and a sixteenth for sure. Now the next stop will be the Mount Mile and Eighth uh, Florida Derby. Uh, I have to think that a uh, few of these trainers with other three-year-olds are going to have to get wise to this tactic and, and get a rabbit and try to torch this horse in eight and change or something like that because when he just goes along 46 and one, 10 and change or so, he's on cruise control. If you got to beat this guy, you got to push him early and there was no one in this race to do that. They were lined up single file like a standard bread race when Jerry called on the Colt uh, in the stretch, he just drew away from Coronado's quest. Now, as for uh, the misbehaving Coronado's quest, we have to say that his deportment was improved over his Hutchinson performance, but again, he comes up second best. This time, they put uh, Mike Smith up in the paddock and just took him right out of the paddock before the other three horses and let him uh, gallop up in front of the stands. And he was still cranked up pretty good, but uh, not nearly as bad as we saw him on Hutch Day, but uh, still this horse has to really get his act together if he's going to be a serious derby contender. And then we come to Hallery Hunter, uh, was uh, behind Lil's Lad in the allowance, and comes on and does close a little bit of ground in the stretch here uh, for Nick Zito. I think this was by design. Nicky not really interested in winning uh, any of these preliminary races. And this horse bears a little bit of watching. He's by the very fine sire, uh, Jade Hunter. So uh, let's uh, keep an eye on Hallery Hunter. But right now, the three-year-olds on the East Coast, Lil's Lad, shining brightly at the top of the list as he goes to mile 16th, 142 and three. This son of Pine Bluff has now won three in a row. And uh, Florida Derby is the next stop, and uh, they're going to have to get a rabbit after this guy because uh, they can't let him sit those chilly fractions and expect to run him down in the stretch. And I don't see anyone else, uh, maybe Sweet Southern Saint, uh, off of this mysterious injury that prevented him from running uh, on Saturday afternoon. I don't see any other three-year-olds around uh, in South Florida to uh, make much of a dent here with these guys. So we'll see uh, what happens come Florida Derby Day. But right now, a little slight in the catbird seat. All right, that was Saturday. Now Sunday afternoon, we've got the three-year-old fillies in the Devona Dale Stakes. Shorten up the distance just a tad to a mile 70 yards here. And the purse is halved from the fountain. This is a hundred grand for the sophomore gals. Let's take a look. Here's Tom with the call. And they're off. You and me breaks on top. Dixie Melody just to her inside. On the rail, it's Angel of a Mom. Nancy's Glinner will get hung up wide as they go into the clubhouse turn. Holy Capote is right there as well. Into the clubhouse turn, and it's Dixie Melody with a short early lead. You and me right between horses. Now the outside, Nancy's Glitter, those three scrimmaging for the lead. Justin behind Angel of a Mom in a good spot early. She's a ground saving fourth. Cottonhouse Bay is fifth. Holy Capote on the outside running in sixth. Marigold Princess, then Diamond on the run, down inside about eight lengths from the front runners. Sazerac Jazz, second to last. Salt Lake Dancer trails the field. 23 and two for the opening quarter. The pace is a strong one. The leader is Dixie Melody by a length and a half. You and me running second. On the inside, Angel of a Mom has moved up several spots, now running in third position as they pass the half mile pole. The half, 46 and four fifth seconds. A demanding pace here has been established by Dixie Melody, the leader by a length. 
Angel of a Mom poised in second. You and me on the outside third. And Diamond on the run has found her best stride. And she's drawing closer to the leaders. Midway round the far turn. Long shot Dixie Melody in front. Angel of a Mom pressing harder. You and me on the outside. Diamond on the run still four lengths behind as they pass the quarter pole. Holy Capote is fifth. And the field turns for home with Dixie Melody still holding a tenuous lead. It's Dixie Melody in front. You and me coming to her. Angel of a Mom is back third. Diamond on the run still two lengths behind. In the final furlong, it's you and me in front. Diamond on the run closing. Dixie Melody now third. 100 yards from home. Diamond on the run gets to the lead at the 70-yard marker. And Diamond on the run wins it under a well-timed move by Pat Day. Diamond on the run. Pat Day up for a nice two-length score, sent off the six to five favorite. Remember, she was second in the seven furlong forward gal, closing very nicely earlier on in the Gulf Stream meeting. She's a daughter by Chris S. She gets her, just her second career win. She was eligible for non-winners other than, and now she's a graded stakes winner, uh, trained by Stanley Hoff. Very nice, diamond on the run. You and me was second, couldn't hold off. Diamond on the run with uh, Pat finishes in the place position. Then Dixie Melody gets the show money. The mile 70 yards uh, for Diamond on the run, 142 and three. All right, moving along to Tampa Bay Downs. On Saturday afternoon, the Tampa Bay Breeders' Cup stakes was the Featured race at the Oldsmar Oval. These are older horses at a mile and a sixteenth, fifty thousand dollars in added purse monies. Here's Rich Grunder in Tampa Bay with the call. From between horses, that's man the ship now bombing back. Game leader challenge inside the final for long. It's big fast, and here comes the claimer, ship liner and Goberdon looking for a shocker. Here he is, ship liner. It's ship liner and Pudgy Goberdon to win it on the way running to the corner. Big fast to second, pleasant two back to third. Hey, his ship liner, a claiming horse coming up the inside with Punchy Goberdan in the irons to get a length and a quarter win in the Breeders' Cup Stakes at Tampa Bay. A Florida bred, trained by Dave Pittman, sent off at 25 to one. Hang on, folks. Ding! $52.80 on Shipliner. They're giving it away at Tampa Bay. Big, fast, and pleasant, too. They'll be the place and show guys in the race. Shipliner lighting up the tote board. Goes the mile and a 16th in one. 44 and 1. Who? All right. From Florida, let's come up to Maryland now. Check on Laurel's action over the weekend. The Alindora Stakes at a mile and a 16th. Saturday afternoon's feature at Laurel. We got three year old Phillies going a mile and a 16th. $50,000 is the added purse. Here's Dave Rodman with the call for us. And they're off. Made of Vanilla showing speed along with Gabe's girl to the outside of her. Here's Leave No Prince right there. Leave No Prince and Made of Vanilla the first two into the first turn. They're going a solid clip up front. Now Girl Power has taken the third spot right off those leaders. And Lady Parrot on the outside racing for three wide. Amanda Elizabeth settles back in fifth. Favorite Adriatic Queen has moved up from six. Now four lengths from the front. And back to Gabe's Girl and Ragtime Doll is the trailer some nine lengths off the pace. Off the back stretch, Maid of Manila from Leave No Prince is just to the outside of her in second. Lady Parrot stalking the lead third. Girl Power racing close fourth at the rail. Adriatic Queen is well placed fifth four lengths from the front, then a break of two. Gabe's girl is next. Ragtime doll beginning to move underway from second last, and Amanda Elizabeth trails the field by nine. Made of Manila by one length from Leave No Prince and Girl Power. Adriatic Queen got a clear run on the outside, and here she comes. Adriatic Queen gearing up for a run on the outside, coming right on up to Made of Manila. Might blow past her at the three ace pole. Adriatic Queen puts that neck in front with three ace to go from Made of Manila. Leave No Prince, leaving Girl Power back there, dropping back 
racetrack as well as Lady Parrot. Now Ragtime Doll begins to roll six lengths from the front. Top of the stretch. Three of them out across the track. Leave No Prince makes the lead from Adriatic Queen who suddenly is under pressure. And Ragtime Doll in the green color switches at the far outside for the stretch drive. Leave No Prince. Adriatic Queen battles back down to the inside. Adriatic Queen to reclaim the lead at the furlong marker from Leave No Prince and Ragtime Doll. It's Adriatic Queen at the 16th hole. She was full of run today. Adriatic Queen to win by three clear cut links under Rick Wilson. Leave No Prince and Ragtime Doll. Amanda Elizabeth came from way back fourth. Adriatic Queen. Bill Edis sends this gal out for a four and a quarter length easy score. Rick Wilson in the irons gets her second in a row and third win out of her last uh, four starts. She's had six lifetime starts. She's been, never been worse than fourth. She's been fourth twice. This filly is just the epitome of an on the board solid betting individual. Adriatic Queen getting the job done. She's by Silver Buck. Leave No Prince was second. Ragtime Gal, uh, Ragtime Doll, beg your pardon, finishing in the show spot. Adriatic Queens, mile on a 16th at Laurel on Saturday, 145 and four. Sunday afternoon, the Notches Trace Stakes for Phillies and Mares was the featured presentation in Maryland. The going nine furlongs for a $35,000 added purse. Again, Dave Rodman with the call. Gladys J happily employed, trying to push Bayer, gamely coming at Gladys J and on the treetops right there too. On the treetop, happily employed and Gladys J, three of them across the 16th out on the treetop, happily employed, trying her heart out, happily employed on the treetop, on the treetop, just a little too much though, on the treetop on top by a head. On the treetop, Edgar Prado up for trainer Stanley Huff. Big day for Strainer Huff on Sunday, winning down in Florida and up in Maryland as well. On the treetop, shipped down from Aqueduct. Uh, she won a money, uh, was, excuse me, she was second last out in a money allowance in New York and went down and got the Notches Trace stakes uh, by a neck. Happily employed in Gladys J. They're the place and show gals in the race, but it is on the treetop, loving the nine furlong she's by tasso and she gets the distance in 151 and two all right turfway park on saturday afternoon hey we got a makeup for you uh from that uh one of the saturdays that they were frozen out at uh, turfway first the regular feature was the valdale state at a flat mile we got three-year-old fillies in this one they go in for a purse of sixty thousand dollars in guaranteed monies. Mike Battaglia in Florence describing the race for us. And they're off. For the lead, between horses, that's tricky move. The outside, Swoop City. Then up on the extreme outside, that's put up the money. Then along the rail, Barefoot Diana has the move into the first turn. On the outside, put up the money. Now gets the lead, has it by two lengths. Swoop City is second. Shakedown now gains ground, takes third. Barefoot Diana moves to the outside fourth. Tricky move is now fifth. Then it's a length and a half to Tricky Quickie sixth. April Gator is seventh. Gap of three to Elite Fleet. Hazel's Honor Trails 22 and two for the opening quarter. And it's put up the money in front with Swoop City. Up on the outside, gaining ground in second. Barefoot Diana takes third. Shakedown on the inside fourth. Gap of three. April Gator gains ground in fifth. Then Tricky Quickie into the turn. And Swoop City now gets the lead. Barefoot Diana takes second. Through from the inside, April Gator is gaining ground. Swoop City goes wide. April Gator on the inside, the outside. Barefoot Diana. It's those three with a furlong to run. Barefoot Diana, April Gator, Swoop City on the outside. Here comes Hazel's Honor. Hazel's Honor flying down the stretch. Now gets the lead from April Gator. Hazel's Honor. Hazel's Honor, two-length score in the Valdale. 
Tony D'Amico of Petrina, Pete Salmon, hey, they knew what they were doing. Last time out, Hazel's Anna ran in the Bel Air Stakes at Laurel, and she was fourth to Adriatic Queen, who we just saw a couple of moments ago, win right back at Laurel. So he said, hey, why should I run against her? I'll go to Kentucky and run in the Valdale, and bingo, she gets the job done at nine to one, cha ching $20.80 for Hazel's Anna as she comes down the middle of the track at Turfway to get the victory. And um, naturally, of course, we have a muddy track at Turfway again this past weekend. Uh, she's a three-year-old daughter of Anna Grades. Uh, we'll have to follow her along. Uh, certainly, she's going to stay out in Turfway and compete in more of those three-year-old filly races there. April Gata, Barefoot Diana, they're the second and third finishers in the race. Hazel's Honor is mild through the mud in 139 and 1. All right, the 10th and co featured race on Saturday's card at Turfway was the makeup of the Dust Commander handicap that we lost a couple of weeks back when they had to cancel because of the weather. Uh, it is a flat mile. We've got the older handicap is going postward, and they're giving away the $60,000 guaranteed purse. Again, here's Mike describing the action. And they're off for the lead. Swift appraisal quickly in the center of the track. The outside Lost King and St. Cloud. And along the inside exclusive Garth into the first turn. Swift appraisal is in front. Has it a length. St. Cloud is second. It's a length to exclusive Garth in third. Lost King on the outside fourth by four lengths. Then it's Leestown, Dinah, Popper, and O. Stephen. The trailer is Malcolm, 23 flat for the opening quarter. Swift appraisal in front. Has it a length and a half. St. Cloud is second. Exclusive guard third ahead, Lost King fourth. Three back to Dinah Popper, who runs fifth. Then on the inside, Leestown is next, followed by Malcolm and O. Stephen. Half and 46 and four. Swift appraisal has the lead. On the outside, St. Cloud gains ground second. Then a gap of two, Lost King third ahead. Exclusive Garth fourth by a length. Diana Popper on the outside is now fifth. And up from the inside into six, that's O. Stephen. As they move for the stretch, Swift appraisal. Exclusive Garth on the inside. Up on the outside, St. Cloud. Then it's O. Stephen. Down the stretch, it's St. Cloud who has the lead. St. Cloud in front, gaining ground, lost King, then Dinah Popper. It's St. Cloud, lost King on the inside. St. Cloud wins it a neck. St. Cloud, Charlie Woods Jr. up for a half length score. 15 to 1. Did I say they were giving money away Saturday at Turfway? I guess so. $32.40 on St. Cloud. Vicki Foley trains this son of Lord Avey. It's his first stakes win. He ran through his allowance condition. In fact, he was third in the uh, last out in an allowance race, and now they try him in a stake, and he comes up a winner. Lost King was second. Dinah Popper finishing in the show spot. St. Cloud goes his mile through that mud Saturday in Kentucky in 137 and 3. All right, let's take our first break here. When we come out the break, we've got our action from Oak Lawn Park, the fairgrounds. We'll be out in Northern California, uh, so get your galoshes ready, <laughs> and then back down to Southern California where the weather is pretty much uh, the same, and then back to the Big Apple as well. Much more to come. Don't go away. Be right back after these messages. This is the Off-Track Betting Television Network. Racing fans, this spring, OTB's racing schedule includes some of the finest attractions the sport can offer. OTB will span the globe through its satellite network to bring you such classics as the Florida Derby, a three-quarter million dollar race for three-year-olds on March 14th from Gulfstream Park. On March 28th, OTB will proudly present 
the third running of the $4 million Dubai World Cup and its companion race, the Duty Free Invitational. April 3rd, the spotlight will be on Sydney, Australia for the world's richest two-year-old race, the $2 million Golden Slipper Stakes at Rose Hill Racecourse. Then in May, the 1998 Triple Crown season begins with the Kentucky Derby and Preakness Stakes. All of these fabulous events wagerable right here at OTB, your source for top flight thoroughbred racing action. All right, in New Orleans on Saturday afternoon, the Devona Dale Stakes was run. What? Didn't we just have that at Gulfstream? Well, she was a very popular three-year-old filly in her day, so uh, on the same day, we have two races named after Big Debbie, as Johnny Beach used to call her. Uh, this edition at the fairgrounds is a mile and a sixteenth. It's a hundred grander, and of course, three-year-old fillies. Let's take a look at them. Here's Tony Bentley with the call. Off in the Devona Dale, and all got away well for the early lead is Lou Ravi from the outside pen, Tufla. Then comes Flash Storm and Shire's End as they make their way into the first turn. Lou Ravi on the lead by three parts of a length, pen, Tufla. In second, now Cool Dixie has moved into third, and then comes Flash Storm racing fourth. Shire's End in between horses fifth, and French Braids is sixth. Silent Eskimo seventh. Five lengths back is D's Secret Code, and Bridal Gate is ninth past the five-eighth pole. Lou Ravi has the rail in the lead here by a half. Pan to fly right there in second, and two lengths back to Cool Dixie poised in third. Flash storm fourth by a head. Shire's end on the outside fifth. Then it's French Braid sixth, Silent Eskimo seventh. Five lengths back, Bridal Gate, and D Secret Code. Now coming to the top of the stretch in the Devona Dale, and Lou Ravi has the lead and will try and hold off Cool Dixie on the outside. Pantufla backs off now. Then comes Flash Storm, Silent Eskimo on the outside. By the eighth pole, Cool Dixie blows by Lou Ravi. Off to lead by four lengths. Lou Ravi will try and hang on for the place. Silent Eskimo gains. It's Cool Dixie. Cool Dixie, she wins another one. This three-year-old daughter of Dixieland Band, owned and trained by Louis Roussel. Uh, we saw her finish second earlier on in the season down in New Orleans to star of Broadway. And then when that one left for the West Coast, she won uh, last time out. Now she comes back here and again wins the Devona Dale by three easy lengths, six to five uh, favoritism on Cool Dixie. Ron Ardwine in the saddle for uh, Louis Roussel. Lou Ravi, the two to one second choice, uh, will be in the second spot, so the favorites run one, two. Well, the silent Eskimo finishing in the show, show position, 143 and one, but Cool Dixie winning another in the Devona Dale Saturday in the Big Easy. All right, Sunday afternoon, uh, three year olds in the Risen Star stakes at a mile and a sixteenth. $100,000, the guaranteed purse for these three-year-olds, a kind of a mirror race, if you will, to the Fountain of Youth held in South Florida Saturday. So let's take a look at this group of sophomores. Again, here's Tony describing the race for it. And they're away in the Risen Star. Good start for all, and time limit goes for the lead. Heart Surgeon is next Dixie Dynamo at the rail comic strip up on the outside then comes North Coat Road and Lightning Gulch it's about four back to Captain Maestri content to trail early as they start the run down the back stretch time limit has the lead by about a length and a quarter North Coat Road on the outside, and Comic Stripper heads apart. Heart Surgeon in fourth, about three off the pace. Then Lightning Gulch in fifth. At the rail is Dixie Dynamo, and two lengths back, Captain Maestri. 
as they move to the half mile pole, half in 47 and time limit is moving well on the lead here. North Coat Road tries to stay within striking distance, inches up a bit, two lengths back, comic strip on the outside. Heart Surgeon is next. Now Captain Maestri begins to move on the outside, followed by Dixie Dynamo and four lengths back is Lightning Gulch. Now turning for home in the Risen Star, it's time limit. Hasn't been asked yet on the outside. Captain Maestri, comic strip next. Then comes North Coat Road and Dixie Dynamo at the rail. Now Bailey goes to work, but here comes comic strip. Time limit on the inside is next. Comic strip takes over the lead. Time limit at the rail, Captain Maestri on the outside. It's comic strip, home first in the Risen Star, photo for place. Well, his time limit, the big three to five favorite for Lucas and Jerry Bailey, of course, flew over from Gulfstream for the ride. They can do no better than finish up uh, in the third spot and holding on to the third spot there. It's just, they're just a dead short horse in the run through the stretch. Uh, Comic Strip, who was second in the Holy Bull Stakes at a mile and a sixteenth behind uh, Cape Town. And again, we have to stress, here's a horse coming into this stake with a race under his belt at the distance. So he had the foundation. Shane Sellers up for trainer Neil Howard and Will Farish and G. Watts Humphrey and others that own Comic Strip, a three-year-old son of Red Ransom, gets the length score. Hey, Louis Roussel's horse, Captain Maestri, sent off at 10 to 1. Nice weekend for Louis, winning the, the uh, Philly Stake, Devona Dale, Saturday, and getting a good second here with Captain Maestri on Sunday. And then uh, the aforementioned time limit, who probably is going to have distance limitations as we go along in this season. Comic Strip, uh, looks like he'll be back at the fairgrounds for the Louisiana Derby. Uh, trainer Neil Howard certainly going to keep uh, he and Lil's lad on separate paths to the first Saturday in May. Goes the mile and the 16th in 144 and 1. All right, Tuesday, it's that time of year again. Mardi Gras in the Big Easy. And on Tuesday afternoon, we had the Mardi Gras handicap. Seven and a half panels scheduled on the grass. A $50,000 guaranteed stake for our older horses. So, again, two. New Orleans, Tony's call of the Mardi Gras. Field for the Mardi Gras handicapper sent on their way and breaking very alertly was Gray Splendor. Top seed is now taking up the chase. Top seed's gonna go and take the initiative into the turn. Gray Splendor down, settled in second. On the outside, that's Premier Chris Chief. And King can run all day. Gentleman Bo. Spotted nicely now on the inside, making up ground. One Axo is moving up extreme outside. Then Dickie Ricky in a break of four more lengths to Boy Stuff who trails. The first quarter is complete, and it's a leisurely pace out here. Premier Chris Chief has the lead on the outside, a half length to Gentleman Bow and Gray Splendor. Moving up on the outside, one Axo. As they move to the far turn, Dickie Ricky is joining the pack. And also right there is Top Seed moving between horses. The half mile is slow at 50 seconds. And it's Gray Splendor capturing the lead from the inside. One Axo on the extreme outside as they turn for home in the Mardi Gras handicap. It's Gray Splendor with a short lead. One Axo on the extreme outside. Dickie Ricky in the pink cap is coming quickly. And down the stretch in the Mardi Gras handicap, Dickie Ricky went by them, and they showed little resistance. It's Dickie Ricky, an upset winner here in the Mardi Gras handicap. Dickie Ricky by four. Well, our apologies to Tony Bentley, who always takes Fat Tuesday off. I knew that. Mike Dimoff called the race for us. And Ricky Dicky certainly didn't take Fat Tuesday off as he blows by them all for a four-length score in the Mardi Gras handicap. Sent off at 22 to 1, gang. Da ding Can buy a lot of beads in the Big Easy with that. Jerry Malancon 
in the Irons for the Young family. Troy the trainer and Lee the owner. Uh, this guy was third last time out in a $65,000 claiming race, a Louisiana state bred, getting the money in the Mardi Gras. King can run all day, finishing in the play spot. Boy Stuff gets the show. One thirty-four and run, the running time for Dicky Ricky on Fat Tuesday in New Orleans. Saturday in Oak Lawn Park, the Essex Handicap, the golden anniversary of the Essex Handicap, very revered stake in Hot Springs, a mile and a sixteenth the distance for the older horses, the purse on the Essex, seventy-five thou in guaranteed money, and featuring Phantom on Tour coming in for his second start after that resounding score in the Crab Apple, the opening weekend of the meet uh, down at Hot Springs. Let's take a look. They jumped all over him, paid him four to five. Let's take a look at the race. Here's Terry's call of the Essex. And they're off in the golden anniversary running of the Essex Handicap. Relic Reward bounds out there for the lead. Phantom on tour right uh, behind him in second. Buster Bach is third, Brush with Pride is fourth, No Spend, No Glow, Easy's back to fifth. Then it is Treat Me Doc and the trailer magnifies, they move on to the turn. Relic Reward gets the lead by two and a half. Phantom on tour is second to his outside, Buster Block, another three back to Brush with Pride. The opening quarter, not fast, 24 seconds. Calvin Burrell rationing out the speed of Relic Reward, he leads it a length and a half. Phantom on tour, on the chase in second, Buster Block three quarters back in third. It's another four lengths back to Treat Me Doc in fourth. Alongside of him is Brush with Pride, two and a half to No Spend, No Glow, and Magnify the Trailer. They're picking it up some now. The half in 48 seconds flat. Relic Reward still the leader. Phantom on tour second. Buster Block is third by three. Brush with Pride is fourth, followed by Treat Me Doc. Then Magnify, No Spend, No Glow, still not in action. They move on to the turn. Relic Reward has the lead, but now Phantom on tour is alongside. Buster Block staying right with him in third. Three and a half back to Brush with Pride in fourth. They get past three quarters, 112 and two. And here they come into the stretch of the 50th Essex Handicap. Relic Reward still the leader. Phantom on tour second. To the middle of the track. Brush with Pride moves up alongside of Buster Block. The jocks go to the whip. Relic Reward has something left, but Phantom on tour. The beautiful white face Colt trying to come back at him. It is Phantom on tour with a lead. On the inside, Relic Reward. Brush with Pride coming on third. Phantom on tour, Relic Reward coming back in the rail. And the upset winner of the Essex is Relic Reward by a neck. Well, in a virtual match race, right out the gate, Relic Reward went to the front for oh, trainer Cecil Burrell with Calvin in the irons. Phantom on tour dogged them all the way around, and that's the way they stayed. Phantom on tour either couldn't or Relic Reward wouldn't let Phantom on tour get by. A terrific Essex handicap and a big upset here. Six to one Relic Reward getting the neck victory over the four to five Phantom on tour. Uh, this guy was claimed for 50,000 last November at Churchill Downs. He came back here, won an allowance race by six and a half lengths on the front end. That's where he likes to be last time. And Phantom on tour just couldn't get by him. We'll see these guys hook up, I'm sure, a couple more times this season at Oak Lawn. Brush with pride, finishing in the show spot, 143 and four. Relic Rewards running time in the Essex on Saturday in Hot Springs. All right, let's go out to Turf Paradise to take a look at their race on Saturday afternoon, the Coyote Handicap. Six furlongs, 25 thou guaranteed purse for the older horses, and we even got a muddy track in Phoenix. Mercy. Let's take a look of it. Here's Luke's call of the Coyote. At the top of the lane, Sam's Market bracing for the challenger. That's using the old bean. Technical uptick right in there with a shot in third. I'm a top gun in behind the lead, racing fourth. Tudor's Kin Kin and Snow Blake at the back of the pack. Here comes Technical uptick on the far outside to grab a short lead. That's using the old bean in Sam's Market. Technical uptick. That's using the old bean. Digs in. That's using the old bean by an neck. That's using the old bean. That's using the old bean. That's using the old bean with Casey Lambert in the irons. We've seen this guy 
uh, several times over the last couple of years, uh, either winning or placing in minor stakes around the country. He sent off at nine to five and does not disappoint. Gets the job done by the barest of margins as he had to fight for this win in the Coyote. Technical uptick was second, just missing the bob there. Sam's Market finishing in the show spot. That's using the old bean, technical uptick, uptick <laughs> hitting the wire in 109 and a three. All right, to Northern California, to Bay Meadows, beleaguered Bay Meadows. The Hayward Handicap was Saturday afternoon's featured race. A filly and mares gonna splash around through five and a half furlongs of a muddy race course here. It's a $48,000 added event in Northern California. Paul Allen will describe the race for us. In there. Racing. Catalina puts the nose in front. Catalina leads with five eighths to go. Tanya just to her outside. Then it's Carrie Ken to the outside of Nellie's Crown, about a length and a half clear from Great Threads. And Miss Lawless is last in nine lengths behind Catalina. And it's Catalina by a neck with Tanya clinging to her. And the leading duo has gone four lengths clear from Carrie Ken and Nellie's Crown. After that, we have Great Threads, and Miss Lawless is now nine from the lead, three eighths to go. Tanya puts the nose in front of Catalina. Carrie Can is third from Nellie's Crown, and it's Great Threads. Miss Lawless still seven, eight lengths out of it at the top of the lane, and Tanya claims the lead. Catalina still to her inside, then we come back to Carrie Can. Nellie's Crown is six lengths out of it. Great Threads on the grandstand side, and Miss Lawless is finishing well. Down to the final furlong, and Tanya shortens her strides. Carrie Can joins. Tanya to the inside, Carrie Can to the outside, then it's Great Threads and Miss Lawless. They have 50 yards to go, and Carrie Can claims the lead. Great Threads ran a nice one, but Carrie Can is the Hayward Handicap Champion. Carrie Can, a daughter of Saratoga Six, splashes her way to a neck victory. Dennis Carr in the Irons uh, gets her first win in the 1998 season. Her last stake score was uh, the Menlo Park Handicap uh, in Northern California back in October of last fall. Great Threads and Miss Lawless, their second and third in the running. Carrie Can splashes her way the five and a half panels in 104 and one. All right, let's go down to Southern California where it was still overcast, uh, although not nearly as bad as what we just saw up there in the San Mateo. Uh, two stakes from Santa Anita on Saturday. The Bula Boo stakes for three-year-old Calbred uh, Phillies was the featured race. Three quarters of a mile, it's a hundred grand. Here's Trevor and Arcadia with the call of the Bula Boo. Oh, where to go? All appear to come out well. Love on the road is quickest into stride. On the inside is Miss Alligator in the red colors. Getting up to race in the third spot is Lady Las Vegas. Alongside of her is Glens Falls. Mother's Meeting is racing fifth, and Gourmet Girl is sixth. Griselle is second last, nine lengths off the leaders, and two back to Sassy. A half mile to go, and Love on the Road leads at three parts of a length. Miss Alligator having to be sent along at the rail. There goes Mother's Meeting with a big run, and Mother's Meeting second and flying up alongside of Love on the Road. Love on the Road and Mother's Meeting. Those two sprint away now. Miss Alligator can stick with them. Then we come back to Lady Las Vegas. Inside of her is Glens Falls, Gourmet Girl. Grizel is a good 20 off them, and Sassy didn't go on. Top of the road, and Love on the Road on the inside now is carrying Mother's Meeting very wide into the turn. Love on the road there just bumped with Mother's Meeting, but Mother's Meeting goes on with it. And it's Mother's Meeting now. Love on the road, re-rallying, coming back on the inside. These two have it to themselves. Mother's Meeting going a little better than Love on the road. And it's Mother's Meeting in front, three parts of a length. Mother's Meeting and Gary Stevens win the Boola Boo. Love on the road. Mother's Meeting, a length and a half score here for trainer Jack Carava. Gary Stevens up, two starts two wins, albeit uh, a bit of distance between the two starts. The uh, last year in 97, Mother's Meeting won, then given a long rest uh, to perhaps uh, get over some two-year-old problems. She comes right back here as a nice state-bred three-year-old getting the win for uh, John and Betty Mabey's Golden Eagle Farm. Mother's Meeting, a length and a half. Love on the Road was second, Gourmet Girl third. Mother's Meeting going 
the six furlongs, two wins, two starts, and 109 and three. The San Marino in on Saturday at a mile and a quarter, and we are on the grass at Santa Anita this past uh, Saturday. $75,000, the added purse on the race. So again, here's Trevor describing the action for us. The heel for the San Marino sent on their way. Alvo Certo broke a little awkward, but he broke fast as well. Dreamer on the outside of him, and then it's Bahamian Sunshine coming through down at the rail. Those three throw the early speed. They've been followed by Stormtrooper in the green colors fourth. On the outside is Kesem Power, Amerique behind them, and Verglar is quite content to trail the field early. Past the stands first time round, and Alvo Certo out here leading by just over lengths. Dreamer is tracking him in second. Bahamian Sunshine down at the rail is a close up third, and Storm Trooper in the fourth spot, just three lengths off the leader. On the outside of end comes Kesem Power. Amerique is second last, but no more than four lengths covers that entire bunch. And then it's three back to Verglar. Uh, Bunchfield heads to the three-quarter pole in the San Marino. Out on the lead, Alvo Certo. Not in any hurry, just taking them along by a length. Dreamer is racing in second. At the rail, Bahamian Sunshine is tucked in third. They're going real slow now. Kersom Powers on the outside, and Storm Trooper just loping along in fifth. He's three and a half off that leader. Amerique is second last, and Verglar the trailers. Seven lengths would cover them all. Down the back stretch they go, and Alvo Certo in front by half a length. Dreamer keeps in company in second, and Bahamian Sunshine down at the rail. Kesem Power outside of him. Storm Trooper still just biding his time in fifth. Three lengths off the leader. On his heels comes Amerique, and Verglar is seven off the lead. Into the far turn they go in the San Marino. Still Alvo Certo, Dreamer on his outside. Then Kesem Power, Bahamian Sunshine at the rail. Storm Trooper just waiting for somewhere to run. Amerique on the outside. Storm Trooper, Amerique are both going well. Who's going to get first run? Storm Trooper, nowhere to go. And Verglar is running on from last. Top of the lane, Amerique on the grandstand side. Can Storm Trooper get through in the green down at the rail? Verglar is the grey running on late. Kesem Power into the shot too. Kesem Power, Amerique, Storm Trooper getting out late. And Verglar on the outside. Storm Trooper at the rail. Verglar on the outside. They hit the wire. Storm Trooper, a magnificent ride by Corey Nakatani, and kudos for track announcer Trevor Denman to picking up Storm Trooper on the rail. You saw he, he highlighted him in the green colors there. The seam opened, and Storm Trooper burst through for Nakatani to get the head victory. Sent off at 8 to 5, two in a row for this son of Desus, trained by Neil Drysdale. Verglau was second, Kesem Power finishing in the show spot. Boy, there's a hunch play for you, although eight to five, not much of a hunch out in Southern California. Storm Trooper getting the victory in a time of 2.04 and one. Okay, Sunday afternoon at Santa Anita on a muddy racetrack, we had the Las Flores Sprint for all fillies and mares at three quarters, $125,000 in added purse monies. Again, is Trevor describing the action. Oh, no, where to go? Zenders Diablo bounces away fast from the outside gate, calling you in the pink, coming through to be second, and Ivory Mint in the yellow colors going up now to take that second spot. Advancing star one from the rail, and Madame Pandit now taking fourth, just two lengths off the leaders. Then we come back to two-tone Lindy on the outside in the blue colors, and fun all over as seven off them. Past the half mile they go, the long shot, Zenders Diablo on the outside of Ivory Mint. They the two leaders, calling you as third. Madame Pandit is fourth down at the rail, two-tone Lindy on the outside of her. Advancing star is far back, a good eight off them, and fun all over as last. Approaching the quarter pole, and Zenders Diablo makes a dash for home. Zenders Diablo clear by three. Two-tone Lindy on the outside, calling you in the pink. Down at the rail we have Ivory Mint, advancing star running on and Madame Pandit not firing today she's struggling they come for home Zenders Diablo here's fun all over advancing star coming home late as well now it's fun all over on the outside and advancing star Zenders Diablo on the inside advancing star fun all over they hit the wire I believe 
fun all over. Alex Solis up, gets the nose victory. The outside horse flying down the stretch to nail the favorite eight to five advancing star on the money. Fun all over had won four in a row, you might recall, before her last start, which was in the pro or con at a flat mile. It was an off the grass race. She finished up third. Now trainer Gene White turns her back from that mile effort to the six furlong Las Flores, and she starts another win streak all over again. But fun all over. Advancing star, who's is a heartbreaker there, has to settle for the place spot. Zenda's Diablo, a rank outsider at 30 to one, tried to take him gate to wire, hangs on very nicely for third. But it is fun all over going the six furlongs of the Las Flores on Sunday in 109 flat. All right, from Arcadia back to the Big A. Three-year-old filly Saturday and Sunday in New York. We're sprinting on Saturday and we're going around two turns on Sunday. First, the dearly precious stakes was Saturday's sprint race for the sophomore gals. $60,000, the added purse, is the call from John Embriel. And a dance with the bride. Copeland's big gal has the lead. There goes cheers and tears now. Up to challenge. On the outside is cantankerously running in third. Dance with the bride back in fourth. Then comes Diablos, uh, notably in a fifth and clear margins. Three of them across the track here, cantankerously on the outside, in between horses, cheers and tears, and on the rail, it's Copeland's Big Gal. The first quarter went in 22 and three. They move into the turn. Dance with the Bride is running in fourth. Two lengths farther back, Diablos notably in clear margins. Cheers and tears, the favorite has the lead now by a half length. Copeland's Big Gal on the inside. Gaining ground outside is Diablo's notably in clear margins. Dance with the Bride in between horses. Dance with the Bride, Diablo's notably clear margins and cheers and tears. Those four across the track coming down for the eighth pole. Diablo's notably dance with the Bride. Their heads apart, clear margins on the outside. Not today for cheers and tears. Coming down for the 16th pole, it's Diablo's notably who takes the lead. Clear margins now second. Diablo's notably wins it, three parts of a length. Diablo's notably Aaron Grider in the Irons, three parts of a length for trainer Rick Schossberg. She was second in an allowance, one other than last time out. Time before that, she was second in the Ruthless Stakes. Time before that, she was second in allowance, non-winners other than. So she had that Ruthless sandwiched in between two placings in other than conditions, and now uh, Rick says, the heck with that. Let's just go out and win a stake and take care of that condition. And they do. Clear margins was second. Dance with the bride, finishing in the show spot. Diablo's notably, obviously, a daughter of Diablo, goes the six panels in 12 and 2. All right, and the three-year-old Philly route race, the Busher stakes, the grade three Busher was Sunday's feature down at Aqueduct, mile and a 16th for the gals. And again, here's John with the call. And they're off. Above the light, out well with nine lives. Best friends stroll towards the inside. Then comes uh, Jill's little girl and Maria's jingle. At the back of the pack are Lollygag and Hutton Houston. The field moves into the clubhouse turn and Best Friend Stroh has gone up to take over. Best Friend Stroh in front by a length. Above the light runs in second. The first quarter in 23 seconds and now they've reached the back stretch and the favorite Best Friend Stroh is in front. Above the light running in second, nine lives, a closer third. Then Jill's little girl in fourth. It's a gap of four lengths to Maria's jingle in fifth. Then comes Hutton Houston and Lollygag. They continue up the back stretch in the busher, a half mile in 47 and 1. Best friend Stro leading it by a length and a half. Nine lives and above the light are heads apart second and third. Then a gap of three lengths to Jill's little girl. Farther back is Maria's jingle, a Lollygag, and Hutton Houston. Best friend Stroh is in front by two and a half lengths. 
as they come for the quarter pole and best friend Stroh is in front now by three and a half lengths. Nine lives a second above the light, back running in third. Jill's little girl is fourth. Best friend Stroh pouring it on here. It's best friend Stroh now by six or seven lengths. Nine lives is second, then above the light. They're coming for the 16th pole and best friend Stroh, much the best here. Best friend Stroh wallops the field. Above the light comes back to get second. Nine lives was third. Best friend Stroh, Aaron Grider up for trainer Mike Hushin, just wins this race by a pole. She was third last out in her first start in 98 in an allowance race last year. She won the East View down at Aqueduct. She's a state-bred daughter of that red, red-hot sire, Jade Hunter. Best friend, Stroh, just crushing this field, sent off the seven to five favorite. Above the lights was second, nine lives, finished third. Three-year-old Philly, best friend, Stroh, having a ball down at Aqueduct last Sunday going the mile and a 16th in a minute, 46 seconds flat. Okay, that takes care of all of the replay action uh, for this week. Now into our notes department, and uh, finally Gary Stevens has made his decision, and it is Silver Charm. Gary will stick with the near triple crown winner from last year and have to give up the mount on gentlemen. Pat Day has been tabbed by trainer Richard Mandela to resume the riding chores aboard gentlemen. Uh, it was a very difficult decision by Gary Stevens and his agent, and rightly so. Both horses are uh, zeroed in on just spectacular campaigns. Uh, the deciding factor is, according to Stevens, was the fact that Silver Charm, being a four-year-old, is scheduled to race, obviously, all the, through the 98 season and race through 1999 as a five-year-old gentleman who is six will just have this year as his last year of competition before he retires at the end of the season. And also the fact, I think, that uh, Gary has a very uh, warm spot in his heart for uh, Silver Charm after just coming ever so close to winning that Triple Crown last year. So now the gauntlet is thrown down. Let's keep them both healthy. And both are absolute definites for the Santa Anita Handicap on March 7th. In fact, gentlemen might even run in both the Big Cap and the Dubai race, and now that it seems like tensions in that part of the world have eased up. But uh, one step at a time, both definites for the March 7th Big Cap at Santa Anita. And the other part of the threesome, uh, Skip Away, he's uh, down at Gulfstream, all set to destroy a field of uh, individuals, a very short field of runners on this Saturday's Gulfstream Park handicap. He's been tabbed in at 127 pounds. He's been working quite nicely for uh, trainer Hine and uh, jockey Jerry Bailey. And uh, Sonny Hine has really come out blasting away in defense of his horse, saying that not only should have Skip Way have been horse of the year last year, but he, in 97, but that he also should have been horse of the year in 1996, and that he is going to just run this horse, quote, down the rider's throats <laughs> to prove his point. Very sunny, a little bit on the muscle there, I think, but when you got a horse like Skip Boy in the barn, uh, uh, you should uh, be rightly proud of what is accomplished. But, you know, in retrospect, the Sonny has to look back at some of the managerial moves he has made with Skip Boy, especially last year when he trashed uh, Charlie Shella in Oaklawn Park uh, and then went off to, uh, to Lone Star Park in Texas and got beat. So uh, you've uh, got to take as well as you can give. But anyway, he'll get uh, under the gun again. Uh, this comes coming Saturday afternoon in the mile and a quarter Gulfstream Park Handicap. We'll see how he does. He shouldn't have any problem at all. Uh, other races that we'll be following on the program next week uh, from Gulfstream, the Philly and Mayors uh, counterpart to the, Gulf, the, the, the Males is the Rampart Handicap at a mile and a sixteenth. 
Uh, at uh, Laurel, we've got the St. Brendan and the Caniva Stakes. Turfway's got the Marigold for Phillies and Mares. Uh, the Southwest Stakes for three-year-olds. Uh, one of our three-year-olds races we'll key in on this week from Oak Lawn. Uh, we've also got a three-year-old race uh, worthy of note from Santa Anita, the San Rafael, where Sea of Secrets, the undefeated Sea of Secrets, is going to uh, give it another whack at things. And Orville and Wilbur, off of that disappointing performance last out, uh, is going to give it another shot. Uh, also, our action at the fairgrounds, uh, older horses sprinting in the Taylor Special. We've got fillies and mares in the shoe crew. Another Oak Lawn race we'll be looking at is the Pippin Stakes for fillies and mares. At the Big A, we'll take a look at our state breads in the Holly Hughes. Probably stalwart member will be in that race. And uh, then the Best Turn Stakes, a little sprint for our three-year-olds. So uh, a look at this coming week's action. Uh, as for uh, the three-year-old picture, uh, we thought we might as well pop up the dual qualifier page. We haven't done that in a couple of weeks since there's only four of them and just briefly go over them. Grand Slam, boy, I still say he's got an awful lot of catching up to do uh, and the clock is really winding down for Grand Slam. He's been training well, but uh, the first Saturday in May is coming up and that's a mile and a quarter and uh, I don't know if he's going to make it. He, well, look, Lucas has got him, so even if the horse is 85%, Lucas will probably run him. Coronado's quest, uh, Boy, you just never know what you're going to get with his, uh, his uh, capacity to have temper tantrums. Uh, Shug really has, to, uh, has his work cut out for him. We'll see how things go. Next stop, of course, will be the Florida Derby. There's Lil's Lad. And uh, as we said at the top of the program, you know somebody's going to come out of the woodwork with some kind of rabbit to shoot at Lil's Lad. Uh, they're just not going to let him go on these uncontested leads throughout the whole campaign. And then there's Silva Copy, uh, waiting to get back to the races up in uh, Southern California uh, in a couple of weeks. So our four Derby Dual qualifiers, and if there ever was a year that we're really on shaky ground, folks, I would think it's this year. Now, please make no mistake, there are other horses that are dosage eligible, uh, such as Hallery Hunter, who did raise a little few eyebrows in the, in the Fountain of Youth. But those are the only four magical ones, the dual qualifiers. So every couple of weeks, we'll pop that up there and uh, take a look at their progress leading up to this year's uh, Kentucky Derby. OK, I think that puts a capper on things for this week. Thanks for tuning in. As always, stay tuned right here to your OTB TV radio network station, where you get the most complete coverage in thoroughbred racing. Until next week, Jack Wolf is here. So long, everybody. Enjoy that Gulfstream Park handicap.